Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a few things around the greenhouse and the polytunnel. I've got some work I need to do. We're also going to be doing a little bit of planting in the raised beds. We're going to finish off our seven sisters. And I'm also going to explain why I'm no longer going to be using these things. So join me right after this. first thing we're going to be doing is finishing off this raised bed. So this here is my seven sisters bed which is essentially corn which you can see these lovely stalks over here. We have some squashes and some pumpkins also growing in here and the last thing we need to do is add some peas. So I might have waited a little bit too long but I'm sure that they'll still do just fine. So we're going to plant some peas in here and that will finish off the three sisters and we're going to have some lovely harvest at the end of the season. This here is a courgette plant and that's the corn. Basically these are complementary plants so the big one here is the peas right so peas have a very cool way of actually putting nitrogen back into the soil. These plants here the, the pumpkins and the squashes as well as the corn they need a lot of nitrogen and these peas help to put that back into the soil. The other thing that happens here is the stalk from the corn, the peas will use it as a support. So that's why we're doing this. It's the first time I'm trying the uh, Three Sisters method and uh, we'll see how it turns out at the end of the season, but so far it's looking good. And I'll just go and finish off the rest of these plants and we'll move on to the polytunnel. It is such a beautiful warm day today and uh, I'm about to go inside the greenhouse and the polytunnel where I'm really going to start to sweat because it's about 20 degrees warmer in there than it is out here. But before I go in there I just wanted to mention I was in a podcast uh, about a week ago. I was asked about a month maybe a month and a half ago to, to do this and uh, they finally released it last week. So if you have a few minutes to spare, then go check it out. I'll leave a link down below so you can go and find out a bit more. There's a few things maybe you didn't know about me and uh, a bit of chat about chilies and stuff like that. So go check it out if you, if you have some time to kill. Let's get inside the polytunnel and finish up what we've got to do in there and then move on to the greenhouse. Overall, we can see there's quite a lot of good growth going on in here. The middle bed in particular is nice and bushy. All these plants are around about a meter, just over a meter, which is about three, three and a half feet. Some are growing a bit quicker than others. Some are quite lanky, like this one over here, which I've pointed out in the past. And then you get a few which are like this pink tiger down there. If we have a look at that, it's still quite small, but it's a pretty little plant. I'm not going to worry too much about it. And then of course you have plants like this, which is my peach fantasy. Those things have been coming up so quickly. And uh, I think we actually have quite a few ripe ones in there. That'll be part of my chili tasting and uh, chili overview series that I'm doing. I've already filmed a few of the episodes, but I will uh, start releasing them very soon. We can see over the side, there's a ton of green cayenne uh, down there on that plant. So that's growing quite nicely. I'd like the plant to be a bit bigger. We can see the one next to it is quite a bit taller. See that one over there. But a lot of, a lot of peppers coming through. And uh, just behind there, you might notice a bit of red peeking out over there. That is my peri-peri. So we have a few ripe peri-peri. But I'm happy with the progress. We're in the beginning of July at the moment, so it's not doing too badly. We've still got another three months or so and uh, I'm sure we're going to have a ton more growth in that time. My father always taught me buy cheap, buy twice and <laughs> unfortunately a lot of the things I do in the garden that seems to be more true than, than ever. And one of the things that I'm having a bit of an issue with is these drippers. So, You'll notice that these are new drippers down there and uh, I'm actually very happy with these. These are decent. Um, the price a little bit more expensive than the cheaper ones you saw me fit in the beginning of the season. Basically these things over here. And these here, yes they're cheap but they really are not great. The problem with these is you can't get a reliable flow. So I might get these set up and they're flowing exactly how I want them to. But 
if the sun shines a bit brighter and gives a bit more power to my pumps through the solar system then there's gonna be a bit more pressure and these things don't self-regulate i can come back here sometimes with these and uh, i'm actually seeing no flow whatsoever i have to actually fiddle with them quite a bit to get them to work these are self-regulating they do eight liters an hour i'd probably prefer four liters an hour but i got these at a really good deal i'll leave a link down below you can see where i got them from but very happy with them i've got 100 of these I actually ended up changing out all of these inside my greenhouse as well as inside my polytunnel it was a bit of a pain but it's worth it to get some proper reliable flow going through to these plants one of the main reasons that i went with these besides it being cheap is because you can open them up and they've got like a free flow through here with these pressure compensated drippers you can't really get into it it's not serviceable and if you're like me and uh, like I did last season, I didn't clean out the pipes inside the greenhouse. So in here, obviously, these are new pipes. But in the greenhouse, at the end of the season, I didn't flush the system. So what happened is there was a ton of growth inside the pipes and it just clogged up all of my drippers because I actually had pressure compensated drippers inside the greenhouse. I ended up spending hours and hours trying to clean out the pipes, trying to clean out the drippers. Uh, just was a real pain. So I'll make sure at the end of this season that I will clean out these pipes properly so we don't have the same problem again I don't want to have to go and switch out another hundred drippers the greenhouse is also filling up we can see it's uh, really coming along nicely the plants are hitting the ceiling quite a few of them and uh, can't be can't be complaining too much about this sort of growth there are a few small issues mainly with bugs but that's been sorted out with the lovely hot weather we've been having lately uh, things like aphids and whitefly do not like it when the temperature goes too much above 30 degrees Celsius and when the sun is on these greenhouses it's going well into the 40s so let's have a quick look around and I'll show you what I've been up to like I said before I have changed out the drippers here in the greenhouse as well so we've got these pressure compensated 8 liters per hour drippers much more reliable I know exactly how much water or nutrients I'm giving the plants so it just makes it much easier to manage and much more uh, predictable. So I've changed them out in all of the plants that are inside here and uh, much happier with it. It was really becoming a bit of a pain with the other with the other drippers because I just you know some plants were getting a load of water. We can still see actually if we go along here um, we can see water standing in some of these trays but not in others and that's a bit of a throwback because i've only just recently changed out these drippers so we see here this is dry but the same amount of plants we've got six plants in here we've got six plants in here you would expect they would be exactly the same in the amount of water that they're getting but that just hasn't been the case because of those old drippers but now with these new ones is far more reliable uh, this will all evaporate soon enough i'm not going to mess around with it too much but it'll sort itself out i come in here Whenever I get a chance and check on these isolated plants, make sure that the growth hasn't uh, messed up what I'm doing in here. So sometimes they'll grow quite quickly and then the flowers will push up against the bag and you don't really want that. But we can see there, there's a flower that's opened after I put the bag on. And I just got to make sure that it does pollinate. So I just give it a bit of a tap, make sure that the pollen gets dislodged and hopefully will pollinate this plant for that flower. So we'll have a nice isolated poblano there. I need to do a few more poblanos here to isolate them. So like that there, that's a prime candidate over there if this camera will focus. Uh, we can see that that hasn't yet opened. So if I put a bag on that, as soon as it does open, then we know that we've got a nice isolated flower. Loads of growth on my super hots. So this tray here is primarily super hots and it's lovely and dense foliage. This here is a Maruga chocolate. And we can see there are a few babies that have popped up. So there, that one there has pollinated. So it will turn into a lovely spicy pepper. And I'm also isolating a few over here so we can see the flowers inside there are opening up. Quite a few in there, so hopefully I'll get a few that pollinate so I can get some isolated seeds. Just give it a bit of a shake, make sure that they do actually pollinate. Over here as well, we can see those haven't yet started growing thoroughly, but once those do start opening, 
and I'll come in here as well, give them a bit of a shake so that they do pollinate. We can see a few plants are really stretching above my head here. The, uh, the really tall one at the back here, this is the Bertha Chili from the Hippie Seed Company. That thing's just a maniac. It's about seven foot high, I'd say, stretching above my head. And uh, I've really strung it up. We can see that I've strung it up back here. Uh, Trying to get through it all, but uh, there. So I've strung that up. That's just the one stalk. If I come through here, you can see it's strung up on this main stem, but it's now stretching out into the greenhouse. It's gonna kind of take over here. So I need to pull that back too. I am isolating some peppers from this plant because it's quite an interesting plant. It is very aggressive. The one in the polytunnel as well is, is quite aggressive. It's got really pretty little flowers. Um, and they're quite small for the size of the plant. There's really tiny flowers if we put my hand there and see that thing's really small. Be interested to see what the peppers look like. Uh, I haven't grown the Bertha chili before from the Hippie Seed Company, so always love a new variety. But this definitely is a massive chili bush, and uh, I do need to put some more support on it, else it's just going to take over in here and not going to be able to get into my greenhouse. This one here, the Ahi Pina, is doing the same thing. It's stretching out well into the greenhouse, so I need to string that back as well. I'll do that hopefully tomorrow when I have some time. Lots of flowers on here, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some peppers coming along very soon too. Let's take a look through here. The problem is because the foliage is getting so dense, uh, it's getting more and more difficult to actually get to these plants. Uh, wow, I just noticed this thing. So that there is a Brazilian pumpkin. See how thick those stems are down there already. And this thing is, it's pushing up against the ceiling here. I need to, I need to do something, maybe prune it back a bit. But we can see it's bending out. I need to need to give it some support and stop it from trying to take over here. The Bangalore Whippet's tail, you can see it's got quite a thin stem down the bottom there and it's supporting quite a few chilies already. This thing is quite heavy and I've had to support it. I've got some string on it but I think I need to add some extra support because it's, I think it's battling a little bit. But you see these things are huge. That's the one I've been showing you for a while down the bottom there. It still hasn't ripened. It still seems like it's growing. That thing's a beast as well. So, we'll see how long it actually gets before it starts ripening. And lastly, we'll have a quick look at this baby red before we move on to the hydro. These things are nicely ripened up, pretty little things. And I'm hoping that it's going to taste a bit better than my cherry bombs from last year. And maybe that'll replace those because these look fairly similar. Let's take a look at the hydro system. So this is my mini hydro that I built. I'll leave a link up in the top corner so you can see the video where I made it. But this plant is doing really well. Both of them inside here growing quite nicely. This front plant is the Aipina, same as the one at the front of the greenhouse. And this is the one I was a bit concerned about the last time I did a video because I wasn't sure that the thing was gonna start flowering with the nutrients I'm using. So I was considering whether I use different nutrients. But if we have a look here, we can see that flowers are starting to come up. So if you look up there, you can see flowers are starting to come through. I've decided I'm going to stick with the Vaxa range. So this is the, the stuff you get from Ikea. I bought quite a bit of it when I, when I started out this year. And uh, it's still working. It's still doing a good job. We can see the back plant has peppers already on it and uh, they're growing quite nicely. So I think I'll stick to the experiment that I was doing originally, which was just to test how good is the Vaxa range? How good is the Vaxa nutrients? Uh, of course, I am using these nutrients here for my bigger system on the right here. So it'll be interesting to see the difference. I'm definitely getting a lot more growth in the bigger system than I am in here. Uh, but that could be down to a few things. It could be because of the size of this uh, container, size of the reservoir, who knows. I'm also, I'm not paying attention to pH or anything on this. All I'm doing is <laughs> making sure this is topped up with the Vaxa solution and uh, water. So that's all I'm doing. I'm not measuring in the EC, I'm not measuring the pH, just keeping it as simple as I can. You know, I do believe gardening should be fairly simple. 
This on the other hand, not so simple. I am testing it constantly, making sure the pH is correct. We've got pH, we've got an EC meter here. I'm testing it all the time, make sure that everything is working as it should. The results are there. You can see some of my peppers are looking really big. This is my competition poblano. So we really have quite a few decent sized ones. Uh, I have a big hand, <laughs> so you can just imagine how big that actually is. Nowhere near record size just yet, but still time. But this is looking good. I'm also trying to isolate some seeds from this as well. So we'll have plenty, plenty seeds at the end of the season to give away for the competition. And we can see the rest here are all doing really well as well. So there's peppers coming through on most of these. Uh, or at least flowers um, if we have a look we can see that we will have a lot of peppers coming through probably within the next couple of weeks you can see all the flowers in here so I wanted to do some maintenance on this uh, basically the way that my water system works this here is a small 230 liter barrel that I have inside the greenhouse and essentially what I do is I use this as the staging before I actually water my plants so if you've seen some of my videos on my automation, then you'll recognize the system. But basically over here is a kind of a system valve type thing where when the water comes down below, when it reaches a certain level, it pops this up and it stops the water from flowing. So I did this instead of using some sort of electrical monitoring system to, to detect the water levels and things like that, because why overcomplicate something? The problem is this thing here doesn't actually squirt out as much water as I would like. It restricts the flow quite heavily and uh, this thing takes quite a long time to fill up using my pump. So the pumps I'm using are down there, you can see. And these here actually have quite a decent flow rate and they've been restricted because of this valve over here. So the other problem is when the water comes up above this level you can see this is at a bit of an angle because of the shape of the barrel and uh, sometimes this mechanism doesn't work very well it takes quite a bit to actually force it up to stop the flow so let's take this off uh, another problem i want to point out is <laughs> because this was coming out straight in an angle here it was kinking this as well that wasn't really affecting the flow rate because like i said the flow rate is actually restricted in here but that's not going to be too good for this pipe um, i'm sure at some point this is going to perish because of how this is sitting here so i'll fix that as well with a bit of an elbow joint this has done a good job um, so i can't really complain it's done a decent job for now but time for a bit of a better solution and i managed to get this ball valve i'm replacing it with quite cheap so it just made sense the ball valve itself is nothing special it's just a it's a plastic ball this is sealed and what will happen is when the water gets to the right height it just pushes up it pulls this whole mechanism up and will close the tap which the water will come out of here so basically just stops the flow like that <laughs> because of the angle this thing is pointing quite a bit down i'm considering bending this bar over here there we go i think that'll do it let's turn on the pump and see how it works hopefully it doesn't spray everywhere That's working much better than it was before and that stops it from going yeah it's much better flow rate with this than there was with the uh, with the other mechanism so again in case you guys haven't watched my uh, my automation videos the reason I do this is I have a lot of water barrels outside which collect rainwater. Thousand liters there and then there's another whole bunch of them behind the greenhouse. This here 230 liters. If I want to mix in some nutrients it makes sense to do it in smaller batches here. I don't want nutrients flowing in my drip system every time I water but what I do is I fill this up and I mix in my nutrients 
maybe once every other week uh, when it's in the peak season, once every four weeks in the early season. So it just helps me to be able to control the whole feeding of my plants. The other benefit as well, even if I'm not using nutrients, is in the early parts of the season, the system here is going to keep the water warmer than it is outside. And the warmer water is going to help the growth of the peppers. This is a few degrees warmer than it is outside. And yeah, it's just perfect for what I need. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a beautiful day, beautiful weekend, and uh, the plants are really loving it. So it's, it's really good to have you along. I thought that I'd mention when I do these videos where I'm updating you on what's going on in the greenhouse and the polytunnel, it's pretty much the first time I get to go in there in the week because obviously I have a full-time job. So, you know, I'm busy during the week and I just don't have time uh, to go and check on them properly like I do with you guys. So I uh, just wanted to point that out so you can see the, the excitement that I see when I go in here and check on my plants. It's genuine because I'm seeing it for the first time as well. Uh, something else to point out source videos are coming very soon we've got so many ripe peppers coming along now that i can finally start doing some of the ideas that i've had uh, since well since the end of last year i've got some great recipes to share with you guys so yeah thank you for your patience i know a lot of you you're here not because you grow chilies or anything but because you want to see the sauces i'm making and you want to learn some new recipes so they are coming very very soon Thank you so much for watching. I hope that your season is going great and I hope that you've had a fantastic weekend as well. I look forward to seeing you on the next video and until then, stay spicy.